Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 453. PMS is not just a cliche. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moppin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. PMS is not just a cliche. That's actually a title from an editorial that was written in the New York Times last week by a Dr. Barrett, Lisa Feldman Barrett, who is a psychologist and a neuroscientist. And she is addressing her struggle with understanding the concept of PMS compared to, as a scientist, Mm -hmm. compared to as a woman. Because she has felt, as as I understand her editorial, Mm -hmm. she's felt maligned and slandered Mm -hmm. and dismissed Mm -hmm. by men in a patriarchal society who discount the contributions of women because they say they're too emotional, they're too volatile, they're PMSing. And so if a woman says something or experiences something with intensity, then it is somewhat regularly dismissed by males. It's an as, excuse they use. Oh, she's just PMS. To dim- dismiss us. Yes. yes. And, they, mm-hmm. and so she, as a, as a feminist, and she says, I, I've been a feminist, a quote, radical feminist, mm-hmm. who has opposed this kind of thinking. Mm-hmm. And, and actually, what I can tell you, growing up in the South mm-hmm. in the 50s and 60s mm-hmm. and going to school and working, I, I always was told that women were emotionally volatile and that it had something to do with their periods. And so if they were being emotionally volatile, it probably had a connection to their periods. And, and the, the explanations go back in the dim recesses of time when they used to think that it was part of a hysteric, hysterical behavior pattern that only women were subject to because mm-hmm. of the moon and the tidal influence of the fluids in your body. Yeah, well, which we've disproven that. Oh, it's for many years it's been discounted, mm-hmm. but but the net judgment effect that mm-hmm. women are right. Somebody, emotional and they volatile. They somehow didn't for, didn't is, remember, or excuse me, they didn't forget the overall feeling that women are too emotional to be president or to be, you know, that's usually the statement, oh, she'll have PMS and then she can't be president or she'll and have if men are menopause too emotional, and she can't be president. Well, there's a reason for that. You know, there's some... But something so, happened to them, and so, it's usually yeah, a woman behind it. Exactly. Yeah, see? Yeah. So it's Probably their mother. Like Ted Bundy, you know, was his mother. It's just that we're so... We do so much more for society that men are jealous. Probably. We have babies, and we can do the men's job. Well, that's I'm what just, we're learning. I'm just teasing. This no. Is, this the, is well, a, it's, you know, in it's a, a way, it's a... Social a, cultural balance in the mm-hmm. argument. The, the, so, so what's relevant about this editorial is that she has looked at some scientific data, accumulated some data that she says is causing her to rethink her position. Mm -hmm. And she said that what she has found is data through MRIs and CAT scans Mm -hmm. that identify a neural network uh, in the brain of areas in the brain that activate, that fire in certain circumstances. And she calls it the salience network. And other mm-hmm. scientists, psychologists also call it the salience network. And it, it's, a, it's like a scanner. It's a monitor that checks all of your sensory input. You have five senses. And sometimes we talk about the possibility of a sixth sense, mm-hmm. which is the total conglomeration. But they're all sending data to the brain. And there's mm-hmm. a monitor that's checking those and deciding which ones are most important. Which ones do we attend to so, now? Since I'm a doctor, this is like triage in okay. the hospital. Yes. Who's the sickest? Who do we need to bring in first? Right. It's a triage system within our brain. Yeah. It's so so people become hypervigilant. Uh, and people that live high-stress traumatic environments or high-stress jobs mm-hmm. can become hypervigilant because they have to react immediately and they have to react in the right way. Now, you can train that hypervigilant mm-hmm. reaction. Mm-hmm. So that yeah. if if you experience a loud noise, like if you're doing surgery and there's a loud noise, you have to tune all that out because right. your vigilance is focused on 
the mechanics of the body that you're operating you're on. Hyper focused. Hyper focused on mm-hmm. it. And so if somebody mm-hmm. in the operating room falls over, then you say, step up and you yeah. keep doing the surgery. Right. Because that's and, the most instead important. Instead of saying, thing. oh my God, what happened to my nurse that I've worked with for mm-hmm. 20 years? You have and to have somebody she's else on the take back burner. It'll get taken care of mm-hmm. later. Right now, this person and this issue mm-hmm. is what I'm focused on. Right. And so, so you can train that. Right. But what happens in PMS is that they didn't ever. They didn't acknowledge back in the 80s, 90s, 2000s in that the there's, there's not enough progesterone at the second half of the cycle and there is too much estrogen. So it's an imbalance between the two, two hormones that occur from ovulation until the period. So when there's too much estrogen, not enough progesterone, progesterone is very relaxing and calming. Estrogen it makes you more vigilant and emotional. And these two things get out of balance. That causes PMS. Now we we knew this from European European research way back when back in the 80s and I treated it I was probably the only person in St. Louis treating it with progesterone suppositories progesterone sublingual progesterone cream I mean we successfully treated that type of feeling uh-huh. that that out of control irritability um, negative feeling. So it helped with those women to feel more in control. To they feel- felt very in control. They felt normal during the second half of their cycle. And they hadn't felt that for a and, while or they wouldn't have been coming to me. And do you know, did the men in their lives perceive them as being more in control yes. and calmer and yes. more normal? Yeah, they would sometimes come with them, them to the office to tell me how happy they were that they That's had their wives back. Yeah. And these are, these are usually women before menopause. This has nothing to do with hormones after menopause. So this is usually late. Um, cycling, not always older women, but usually older women, sometimes mid thirties to 40 something. So in this editorial, uh, she says that, said Dr. Adriano and I, along with several other colleagues, published a recent paper in the journal Trends in Neurosciences, Mm -hmm. knitting together data from various sources. We explained how negative emotion, memory for negative events, and the connectivity of the two brain networks, the, the, uh, uh, salience network and the default mode network. Mm-hmm. That's the terms they use for those two, mm-hmm. which are the, the map zones that they've, they've found with the, with MRIs. the MRIs. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Said that they, they, how they work together, especially when the woman has a, a concentration of ovarian hormones. Mm-hmm. So when that happens. But what she says is that what the data, and it's upsetting her and making her reevaluate her uh, feminist perspective about just dismissing all of those arguments mm-hmm. and complaints about women is that there is data now that supports that women will more, that their filtering system will identify in more intense ways, negative experience, negative emotions, and you'll remember those more intensely. You'll feel them more intensely. Mm-hmm. So it does seem to emphasize negative things more than she's comfortable with. And so she we have to go back to the drawing board. We have right. to say, that we're looking in the hormones and the locator sites in the brain, Mm -hmm. the balance among them, because Mm -hmm. when they, when it's a perfect storm, imbalanced, then you're going to get this cultural perception that's dismissive of women because they have PMS. You're going, you're going to make everybody believe the cultural perception. She doesn't want society to view women as out of control, crazy women. And in general, we're not in general, women support society more than men do. I mean, we take care of the kids and there's a price to be paid for being the uterus, basically, and taking care of children and having children. I remember so, in the late 80s, there were a lot of people in my business that were doing superwoman conferences because you had women who were trying to climb the executive ladder and build careers who had also taken the motherhood pathway mm-hmm. and they were in relationships and worked for businesses you where- mean like me? The emphasis was you have to be able to do it all, and you have to be able to do it all perfectly. Mm-hmm. And they would take care of the children. They would clean the house. They would do the laundry. Mm-hmm. They would do their job. And the husband would come home and say, bring me a beer, and, and I'm going to watch the news. And that's a problem. And that's a problem. <laughs> and then when she would implode or explode, mm-hmm. he would look at her and, and dismissively and say, it's say oh, it's PMS. You know, yeah. you're just being that way because mm-hmm. it's your period. And how... <laughs> dismissed as a person, the value of, of you and your contributions, does that make you feel? I mean, here's this arrogant male who comes in, or, or ignorant male, maybe not, not arrogant, arrogant maybe. who just doesn't know, A, the work split in his own life, 
Mm-hmm. You know, the, the balance of do you do anything at home? Do you cook any meals? Mm-hmm. Do you do the laundry? Do you, help do, clean? you, do you cut you the grass? You know, mm-hmm. Do you do any of these things? Mm-hmm. Or is that all just the woman's job? In addition to her now having a job of her own and bringing home an equivalent salary mm-hmm. or a higher salary. A lot of guys have some real emotional reactions if their wife makes more money than they do. I know. Because it diminishes their masculinity. Mm-hmm. I don't have any issues with that. My wife can make all the money she wants to make <laughs> as long as she lets me spend it. That's true. So so basically we're talking about a hormonal issue that's been blown out of proportion exactly. and has been um, – has been blamed on every woman in society. Every woman in society has Anytime this. Anytime she gets mad or upset or yeah, feelings hurt I mean, or cries. Or, you know, that's like saying all women are hysterical. Right. Or if a woman raises her voice because something is unjust, then she must just be hysterical because that's not, and that's not real. Right. She's imagining it. So that's my favorite dismissive issue. So you can either blame it on women being hysterical, which is crazy, well, or, it's a diagnosis. The uh-huh. DSM-5 has right. a hysterical personality disorder. And only if women are hysterical. Enough. No, not only women, but mostly women. There are some men who are diagnosed with that. But it's rare mm-hmm. because it's rare. men are just stable and normal. And well, the, the deal is, is the men drew the card of having the same hormones every day. I mean, in general, although she believes that men have different hormones every day, in general, men, until they get older, have the same hormones produced every single day. And so... They don't have ups and downs like that. I mean, and and that's what we do in, at BioBalance when women and men get older. We try to give them the same hormones every day, not up and down every day. It makes us feel better as humans to have the same hormones every day. Yeah. So this is something that's true. Men have the same hormones in general every day until it starts dropping. And women have to go up and down, up and down to make babies. In the end, that's that's our... So, so the argument that you're making, I accept and embrace. However... This woman, if I'm understanding mm-hmm. her editorial correctly, has also accepted and embraced that mm-hmm. argument and I, said mm-hmm. men are overreacting and misunderstanding and then mm-hmm. we're not really that way and you can't categorize us just so that you can dismiss us when we have feelings. Mm-hmm. But she is now saying, mm-hmm. wait a minute, I'm finding some things here scientifically, replicably uh, researched, that make me say negative experiences, negative emotions are experienced more intensely when your ovarian hormones are, out of balance. are saturated, uh, and depending on the balance among them. Mm-hmm. And so she said, I've got to look at that to find out precisely what's making that happen and what can we do about it. I thought she didn't really believe that PMS was real either until she experienced it. No, she wanted it. to dismiss it and say... And, and I've yeah. always believed PMS was real. I saw it in my patients. They complained about it. No one was acknowledging it, yeah. that it was real until, the, until the, this century. Yep. So basically, 20 years before that, they said it was imagined or it wasn't real, but they still kind of wanted to blame us for it. I, of it course. Was, it was a dichotomy that I couldn't quite have to have somebody to put my finger on. can't be us. <laughs> That's true. It can't be. Can't, wasn't so, me. I didn't do it. So anything. in the end, it's real. It's a hormone imbalance. It becomes, and, and it then leads to a hypervigilance that is, and, and irritability and negative thoughts, like a depression, but not quite like depression. That actually occurs for two weeks out of the month, ovulation until their their period, if you have too much estrogen and not enough progesterone. Well, she also says in her editorial uh, that women who take contraceptives that have progesterone in them are more susceptible to depression and suicidal ideation. That's because it's not progesterone. And th- she misunderstood. She doesn't understand hormones, actually. Okay. It's progestin, which is a completely different animal than progesterone. Just Pro- reading this to make sure I quoted that accurately. Yeah, she said progesterone yeah. Yeah. I read, when I read it. So progesterone yeah. is natural progesterone. We give it bioidentically. You ha- usually have to take it other than oral. It's usually it's usually vaginal, rectal, creams, gels, something like that, so that you don't destroy it as it goes through the stomach. But in the oral contraceptives, it's a progestin, a lot like Provera, which is a progestin used in women's... Uh, hormones for postmenopause. It's not good for you. It does. What happens is it goes through the liver as you take it, and it makes more estrone or another estrogen. Right. So it makes your estrogen to progesterone ratio even worse. Too much estrogen, not enough progesterone. And that's where the volatility and, and the emotional. Right. And that's okay. what causes PMS. So, right. so she has. You know, it's like she needs to call a gynecologist. 
And it, do- <laughs> and it and doesn't talk- help that the negative situations are more intensified and more no. identified and remembered. No. Because that helps all of us say, oh, well, that's, that's your bad self. And that yeah. always comes just when you're PMSing. It's a, it's, it's just like anything else. It's an illness. Yeah. And you need to, and, and it, a dysfunction that you need to have balanced. And that makes you healthier and more normal. So hopefully, if you are female and you have any experience at all with, with yourself or women in your lives, you can help them understand that we're learning more about it. We're learning more how to identify when and why it occurs and what to do about it. We're believing it. But we are in support of the argument that you can't just dismiss women. Uh, uh, patriarchally as being emotionally volatile creatures that we don't have to attend to that aren't logical or, or capable of making good decisions. That's right. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.